Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about elimination, one of the methods to solve a system of equations. So far before this video, we've talked about graphing to solve a system, we use substitution, we also used elimination when it was just addition and subtraction and that was able to work. All of these examples today are going to require multiplication first and then we can go ahead and do elimination by addition or subtraction. Let's take a look. So there's two different cases what we're going to be looking at today. One case is where only one of the equations needs to be, um, I'm sorry, only one of the equations needs to be multiplied in order to do the elimination. And then the second half of today is about both equations needing to be multiplied in order to solve by elimination. So here, if I give you the system x plus 10y equals 3 and 4x plus 5y equals 5, we can clearly see, especially from our last lesson, that I cannot just add these equations together or subtract them and have the variables eliminate out. X is not going to eliminate out. The Y's are not going to be able to eliminate out. However, I can manipulate one of the equations or sometimes both of the equations to purposely make them be able to be added or subtracted in order to eliminate. Now for me personally, I choose to manipulate one of my equations or both so that when I add them together, my x's or y's eliminate out. And the only way to have that happen is to have the coefficient be opposites. So for example, if I showed you this equation and I said, you know what, if only this first equation actually started with a negative 4x, if this was a negative 4x, then I know if I add these two equations with my positive 4x, my x's will be eliminated. Well, we can purposely do that. We should remember for any equation, you can always multiply an entire equation and it will still remain the true equation. It's just not in simplified form. So if I multiplied the entire first equation by a negative four, purposely making it so that it becomes negative four X and then negative 40 Y equals negative 12, keeping the second equation the way it is, Look at what now is able to happen. I'm able to go ahead, and when I add these equations together, eliminate out my x's, and I can go along with the rest of the process. Now, there's usually more than one way you could do this. This method is multiplying the first equation by negative four to cancel out my x's. But what if I decided I wanted to eliminate my y's? For some reason, let's say that spoke to me. Well, what would eliminate out with a positive 10y? A negative 10y. And so then you would think, what would I have to multiply this second equation by in order to purposely turn the second equation into not positive 5y, but negative 10y? And it should be pretty obvious that if we multiply that entire second equation by a negative 2, so I end up getting negative 8x minus 10y equals negative 10. Again, notice I'm multiplying the entire equation by that number then my y's would eliminate out and I'd be able to do that process. So let's take a look. Now I did take that first exact equation that we multiplied by a negative four. And now we're just gonna get the practice in. Again, this is now very repetitive of the previous lesson. We then know we add up what's left over. So this becomes negative 35y equals negative seven. Divide both sides by negative 35 and we end up getting y is one fifth. And then we recall from our previous lessons that the solution to a system is an x and y coordinate. So after I have my y, I go ahead and I substitute this in into any of the equations. Now here's also what's pretty cool. You have these two original equations, and then you also have this third brand new equation. You can technically plug in one fifth into any of these and you will get your answer. I'm gonna just go ahead and use the first equation, substitute in my one fifth, one-fifth of 10 is two, and solve for my x. And always remember, guys, your solution is always the x-coordinate and then your y-coordinate. It's not the order you solve them in, it's just simply the x and then the y. All right, so let's take a look at this next one. This one is a translating problem. It says the difference of three times the number and uh, three times the number x and y is equal to negative four. So three times the number x and y, so difference, is equal to negative four. And just ignore the fact that I have that parenthesis there right now, that is just about the next step that's going to happen. The second equation, two times the number x plus two times the number y is equal to 72. 
Now, technically here, um, if I look at this first equation, I see the 3x and the 2x. Well, I'm probably not going to turn a 2 into a negative 3 very easily. But look at my y's. What would eliminate out with a positive 2y? It would be a negative 2y. And in order to turn the first equation into having this become a negative 2y, I would need to multiply the equation just simply by 2, which then turns it into 6x minus 2y equals negative 8. Notice I just leave the second equation alone. I can now go ahead and add these equations together, which ends up giving me 8x equals 64. And then you know the deal here, guys, at this point. You solve for x, and then I can go ahead and substitute this 8 into either one of the original equations or even the brand new equation that we created. I'm going to go ahead and just show you what it would look like if I used my second equation. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute 8 in for x. And then you guys know the deal here. I know I keep saying that, but at this point now, uh, this part of the lesson is not something that's brand new to us. We're just doing our good solving equation skills, and we end up getting our solution of 828. Okay, second situation here is when both equations need to be multiplied. So these are going to be cases when you look at them. Um, a 3x would eliminate out with a negative 3x. Well, we're really not going to multiply 2 by a friendly integer to turn it into a negative 3. And a negative 5y would eliminate out with a positive 5y, but it doesn't really look like we have something, a nice integer that we're going to be able to multiply negative 2 by. So this is a case where both equations would need to be multiplied. And there's so many, it, the options are almost infinite um, of what we could technically do here. But the main idea is always the least common multiple. What would be the smallest number that I could turn a 3 and a 2 into? Which is really, what's the smallest number that they both multiply to get? The 3 and 2 are products of what number? and it would be six. So imagine I multiplied the first equation by two, and if I multiply that first equation by two, I'm gonna start off with a six x. Well, what would I have to multiply the second equation by? So I end up with a negative six x here, and I should see that it should be a negative three. And so look what happens here. If I multiply the entire first equation by two, and I multiply the entire second equation by negative three, I end up with a positive 6x and a negative 6x, which would eliminate out, and then I could do the rest. You might also say, you know what? What if I multiply, could I multiply the first equation by a negative 2 and then the second equation by a positive 3? And the answer would definitely be yes, okay? You can multiply this and get a negative 6x and then a positive 6x, and it would end up getting the same result in the end. Another option might be that you decide you want to eliminate the y's. So look at my y's. A 2y and, I'm sorry, a negative 2y and a negative 5y. Well, the least common multiple of 2 and 5 is 10. So if I multiply the first equation by 5, okay, and I multiply that the whole way through, I'm going to end up getting a negative 10y here. And think about what eliminates out with a negative 10y. It would be a positive 10y. Well, if I have a negative 5y here and I want it to become a positive 10y, I'd have to multiply that by negative 2. And when I do that, I end up getting that nice positive 10y. Notice I multiply negative 2 to every part of the equation. And then at this point, I would be able to go ahead and simplify that out or eliminate it out and do the rest of my solving. So there's always multiple options. And what I'm going to show you here in this first problem is I actually took that exact problem that we just saw in the beginning. And if I multiply the first equation by 2, and I multiply the second equation by negative 3, again, I just took the first example that we were I was showing you. And then I do my solving. So negative 4y plus 15y is 11y. This becomes negative 44. I end up getting y is negative 4. And remember, we have to substitute this in to solve for x. So here's also what's nice. You have your two original equations. Now you actually have also two more equations. You could technically plug in y equals negative 4 into any of these four equations to solve for x. I'm going to just go with my first equation here. I'm going to substitute in that negative 4 for y. Carefully, carefully solve my equation until I get my x-coordinate, and then we know the drill at this point. It's always the x-coordinate comma the y-coordinate, and we're done. 
Okay, last problem here of this particular set before we look at some special cases. It says Nathan sells five cupcakes and six lollipops for $10.75. And Olivia sells three cupcakes and four lollipops for six seventy five. How much do they cost? So how much does you know one cupcake cost? How much does one um, lollipop cost? So we're going to define our variables. We're going to ta uh, talk about the cost of a cupcake being x and the cost of a lollipop being y. So if I use that then and I create this system, it would be five x so five cupcakes plus six lollipops y equals 1075. And you can ignore the parentheses around it because that's just showing the next step. Olivia's equation would be three x, so three cupcakes, plus four y, four lollipops, equals 675. Clearly I can't just multiply one equation and make it work the way I want to work it. So if I multiply my first equation by three, that's going to turn my x into 15x. 15x will eliminate nicely with a negative 15x. So I'm going to multiply my second equation by negative 5. Remember, you multiply every single term in the equation. So the 5x, the 6y, and the 1075 by 3. Then you multiply the 3x, the 4y, and the 675 by that negative 5. Because the 15x and the negative 15x are opposites, I can just simply add these two together. Solve for y. It ends up, ends up being that y is 0.75, which we know we're talking about money, so that would mean 75 cents. And then I can substitute in this 75 cents for y into any of these four equations. I'm just going to use the first one. And after I plug it in and solve for that, I can end up getting my value for x, which is 1.25, which remember we are talking about money. So that would mean that my cupcakes cost $1.25 each and lollipops are 75 cents each. Okay, good. All right, so I've got a few last problems here and a couple of the last problems are special solution problems, so make sure you uh, pay attention closely to this. So in this system, um, it should be pretty clear we wanna multiply the second equation by a positive two. That way we end up keeping the first equation and then the second equation ends up becoming negative 2m plus 4n equals 10. Once we have that, we're al um, able to eliminate out our m's. Solve for n. And then after we solve for n, we can go ahead and substitute it into either equation to solve for m. So I went ahead and I plugged it into the first equation. And I end up with my solution. And I know I went through that one very, very quickly only because this problem is about if you're not dealing with X and Y, everyone, and you're dealing with other variables, just always your solution is in alphabetical order. So my solution would be the M, which is negative one, and then the N, which is two. Okay, so nothing crazy about that problem, very straightforward, but just making sure we know how to put the, our solution in the proper order. The next system, this is an example where we could have a fraction. So I just want you to know it's the sa same process, same idea. I could go ahead and I could multiply this second equation by a negative four um, and able to eliminate out my x's. I could also technically multiply the second equation by negative six because a negative six times negative one half would be positive three. And I could do that to eliminate out my y's. So either option would be good. We now then know we get negative y equals 2, divide both sides by negative 1, we get y is negative 2, and then we can go ahead and substitute in that y is negative 2. And at this point, this is just a process that we've gone over numerous times, and we write our answer as the x value comma the y value. So now our two special cases. So for these two special cases, we're going to see that if we have x plus y equals 3, and x plus y equals negative 3, um, if I use subtraction here, well, x minus x is gone, y minus y is gone, 3 minus negative 3 really means 3 plus 3, which is 6. Sometimes you can have a system and the x's and y's both eliminate out, and you're left with just a number equaling a number. In this case, it's not a true statement. 
which would mean that there is no solution to this system, which then means if there's no solution to this system, if I were to graph those two equations, they are definitely parallel lines. This last one here, 2x minus 4y equals 6 and x minus 2y equals 3. Well, if I go ahead and I multiply the second equation by negative 2, I end up with this as my second equation. Whoops, I just gave away the answer. And so 2x plus uh, negative 2x, that eliminates out. Negative 4y and a positive 4y, that eliminates out. 6 and negative 6, that also eliminates out. If everything ends up eliminating out and you have 0 equaling 0, we know that that's a true statement. And if it's a true statement, that means there's infinitely many solutions, which actually means that these two original equations are for the exact same line. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.